Hello everybody and welcome to Penguins to Go, your daily dose of Pittsburgh Penguins news and analysis. You can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcast from. I'm your host Nick Berlansky and today we'll kick off my 2022-23 Pittsburgh Penguins player reviews. I'm going to be doing two players per episode and I'm hoping to have at least two of these episodes per week. So these should run throughout the month of May and into the beginning of the month of June. So the remainder of the playoffs, basically. And this episode, I'm going to start where you always need to start when talking about the Pittsburgh Penguins. No matter how you're talking about them, no matter what you have to say about them, if you're doing a comprehensive look back on a Pittsburgh Penguins season, you start nowhere except looking at Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin. Top two centers on the Pittsburgh Penguins. They were that this season. They've been that for over a decade and a half. So let's get into Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin's 2022-23 player reviews. Sidney Crosby is who we'll lead off with. His stats this season, 33 goals, which ranked second on the Pittsburgh Penguins. 60 assists, which led the Pittsburgh Penguins. And 93 points, which of course also led the Pittsburgh Penguins. Analytically, Crosby had a good season as well. 54% of the shot attempts at 5-on-5 when he was on the ice this year. Third on the Pittsburgh Penguins. 55.5% of the expected goals at 5-on-5, which ranks 7th among Pittsburgh Penguins. And 53.3% of the scoring chances, which is 2nd. On the Pittsburgh Penguins, but the only player he is behind in that category is Mikhail Granlund. Just to pull back the curtain a little bit, when I ran these stats, it is with a minimum of 200 minutes played, and Mikhail Granlund, whether you believe it or not, played a quarter of an actual season with the Pittsburgh Penguins and over 200 minutes of ice time. So he qualifies based on those standards, and while, yes, Granlund did lead the Pittsburgh Penguins in scoring chances for percentage. He did so in 21 games, whereas Sidney Crosby was second in 82 games. Let's also not forget the fact that Sidney Crosby is often, if not always, matched up against difficult, more difficult opponents than Mikhail Granlund was when he was on the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, yes, Crosby finished second in that category. But in my eyes, he's probably the best in that category on the Pittsburgh Penguins. I kind of disqualify Granlin, even though the parameters I set before I did this exercise did not. So I'm disqualifying Mikhail Granlin, and we'll get to his, his review a couple weeks down the road. The highlight moment for Sidney Crosby was reaching the 1,500-point plateau. It was a year of really just Sidney Crosby going and, and doing the work. Right, He was his normal, great self for most of the season. He finished with 93 points, which is once again a point-per-game mark. 18th straight season, he's done that, and he's only played in 18 seasons. So he is the pillar of consistency for the Pittsburgh Penguins. But like I said, that highlight moment was his three-point performance against the Detroit Red Wings late in the season. And that was at a time when, hey, listen, the Red Wings had beaten the Penguins in both games played, and the Penguins needed this win to stay alive in the wildcard race. Crosby and the entire team, really, came out, played a phenomenal game, and of course Crosby hits the 1,500-point plateau, continuing to climb up the NHL all-time scoring list. Other than that, not many... Huge highlight real moments for Sidney Crosby. It was just another show up, be great, go home type of season for Sidney Crosby. At the end of the year, he misses the playoffs for only the second time in his career. The first time was his rookie season. But I think if you ask anybody, they'll tell you it wasn't mostly Sidney Crosby, right? Most of it wasn't Sidney Crosby. That's a better way of putting it, excuse me. The one knock that I'll give Sid, and it's not even a knock, because it's not like he played poorly towards the end of the season. And 
maybe my expectations were just a little too high from what I expected Sidney Crosby to do when the Penguins had the playoffs on the line. He just didn't elevate his game right at the end of the year. He had that three-point game against the Detroit Red Wings, but other than that, he didn't elevate his game to the level that the Penguins, I guess, needed to get into the playoffs, but also the level that I think we all expected him to be at. Right? We're so accustomed to, hey, the moment's getting bright, Crosby's going to be amazing. The moment got bright, and Crosby was great. But he just didn't flip that certain switch that we've seen in the past where he says, you know what? I'm not letting this team lose. I'm not letting this team miss the playoffs. We've seen it so many times in his career. And again, it's nitpicking. Crosby had 93 points this season at 35 years old. And he looked, for the most part, like he was a 28-year-old, right? Maybe his game's a little different, but he still dominates the way that he wants to play the game. So this is nitpicking. And I also think part of it was puck luck. Part of it was the people that were playing around him, right? The people that were playing when he wasn't on the ice and what was happening there. Part of it was he probably was exhausted because he carried the team for the vast majority majority of the season. Him and his line mates and then Malkin and his line mates. They carried this Pittsburgh Penguins team to relevance this season. Because if it wasn't for those two lines and if it wasn't for the performance of Crosby and Malkin, who I'll get to in a minute, this Penguins team is probably bottom 10, potentially bottom 5 in the National Hockey League this season. That's how bad the rest of the team was. And they'll get their day in court, right? I'm doing this on almost every player that is suited up for a Pittsburgh Penguin this season. They will get their day in court. But I just expected, and it it might be the expectations, like I said. I just expected, and I said it on the podcast, whether it was tip of the iceberg or whether it was here on Penguins to go, I said so many times, listen, it's coming down to it. Crosby's about to go berserk. Crosby's about to go insane. Crosby's about to elevate his game to a level we might have never seen before because he doesn't miss the playoffs and he doesn't want the Penguins to miss the playoffs. That never really happened. And I guess that's the biggest knock I can put on him. Right? It's not like he was bad. Like I said, 10 points in the final 14 games. But with the playoffs on the line... Would have expected, in my eyes, at least a point per game. And again, before you get in the comments and say, wow, this you know, this guy is really harsh on a guy. Well, I mean, they've earned that, right? Crosby, Malkin, they've earned those expectations because they've put those expectations on themselves. We've seen them for 18 years for Sidney Crosby, 17 years for Evgeny Malkin, come in, work their butts off, and be the best at elevate in the most important moments, which is why we have those expectations. So, at the end of the day, he remains easily the best player on this hockey team, easily one of the best players in this entire league, and he had another great season. You you look at Sidney Crosby through 18 years, this season won't really be remembered very much. He has two more years left on his current contract. He said flippantly last offseason that, hey, maybe I'd like to play for six years, but I really don't know. I'm going to play out my contract and then reevaluate. I think one thing is certain that both Crosby and the owners at Fenway Sports Group aren't going to let him play for anybody else. So you're going to watch his career play out in the next couple of years. If he puts together seasons like we just saw, there is nothing you can complain about. I had to nitpick and say, wow, 10 in the final 14 games, you know, he didn't reach my expectations. Yeah, I have high expectations of Sidney Crosby. You should. You shouldn't be like, okay, yeah, 93 points. End of the day, yeah, cool. Good season for Crosby. Everybody else sucked, which for the most part it is it, but he just didn't elevate to the level that I I think I expected. And yes, that's disappointing. Yes, would I rather have 
watch the Pittsburgh Penguins take out the Boston Bruins last night in Game 7? Yeah. Would that have happened? You know, nobody knows. Revisionist history is just lies, basically. So, we'll see what happens over the summer. But I have no concerns about Sidney Crosby going forward, right? Father Time's undefeated. I'm sure he'll come for Sidney Crosby one day. But it didn't happen this season. And as of right now, it doesn't look like it's going to happen next season either. So... If I gave a grade on it, which I'm not giving a grade to everybody, I'd still give Sidney Crosby an A, right? You got to give him an A. Let's move over to Evgeny Malkin. His stats this year, 27 goals, tied for fourth on the Pittsburgh Penguins. 56 assists, second on the Pittsburgh Penguins. 83 points, also second on the Pittsburgh Penguins. And then analytically, very, very solid performance this season as well from Evgeny Malkin. 54% of the shot attempts at 5-on-5, which was good for second on the team. 56% of the expected goals, which is fifth on the Pittsburgh Penguins. And then 54.27% of the scoring chances, four percentage, seventh on the Pittsburgh Penguins. It was a good year for Evgeny Malkin. It was a really good year for Evgeny Malkin. And it wasn't a show-me year. We say that all the time about certain players. Most of the time, it's reserved for younger players that need to prove their worth at the NHL level and in the organization. But it was as close to a show-me year that a already booked Hall of Famer, three-time Stanley Cup champion could have, right? All of the discussion, all of the discourse last offseason, does Evgeny Malkin have it anymore? Can he play 70 games, right? He hadn't played 70 games since 2017. Can he stay healthy when he's healthy? You know, he's great, but... Is he that good? Can he be consistent over that many games at the age of 36? All these questions that people ask, there were players, not players, excuse me. They're definitely not players saying anything because it's the NHL and players don't come out and say stuff like this. But there were people, whether that be in the fan base, in Pittsburgh Penguins media, people I've talked to, people, I don't want to say people I've talked to because it's not behind closed doors. But there were a lot of people that were outwardly saying, hey, Maybe Vinny Trocek's a better idea. Hey, maybe they should go another way. Hey, maybe they should just not get a big second line center, get Tyler Mott and somebody else. I don't, Barkley Goodrow, right? Like, I don't think Barkley Goodrow was part of it, but Vinny Trocek was the main name. Malkin came in and outperformed everybody that people had said maybe better than him, right? Over a point per game. 82 games played. Do you remember the last time Evgeny Malkin played an entire season without missing one game? I'll give you a second. I'm not going to give you long enough to look it up, but I'll give you a second. The last time Evgeny Malkin played all 82 games in a season was 2008-2009, his third year in the league. Before he or Sidney Crosby had won a single Stanley Cup championship. This was the third time in his career that he did it. He did it in 2007-2008. He did it in 2008-2009. And he did it in 2022-23. That is impressive, to say the least. Now, playing in all 82 games is not the main takeaway. The main takeaway is he did that and scored 83 points. The main takeaway is he did that and put up 27 goals. The main takeaway is he did that and had 56 assists. The main takeaway is he did that and reached the 1,000 game plateau, becoming the second Pittsburgh Penguin to ever do it behind Sidney Crosby. And that was his highlight moment. Reaches the 1,000th game mark. Celebrates with a win in Chicago at the end of a great road trip, right? 3-0 and on the road trip. Surprised by Nikita, his son in the locker room before that game. Reads out the lineup cards. Everybody mocks Evgeny Malkin's warm-up, which has been a thing for both Crosby, Malkin, and then eventually Latang. And then the following game happens, which just continues that. So his biggest moment was really just an encapsulation of two games. Everything that happened in Chicago, great win. And then, of course, the celebration at PPG Paints Arena in the following game against the Calgary Flames, where Mike Sullivan had a gut feeling in the shootout. I'm going to put Gino out there on his big night with a chance 
to win the game. Puck on his stick, game on his stick. And Evgeny Malkin roofed a backhander, sent that crowd into chaos, and then failed to throw his stick over the uh, over the boards the first time. Got it over there the second time in a great moment. Fantastic moment. One of the all-time moments when they play Evgeny Malkin's career highlight reel as he's entering the Hall of Fame in a decade from now. It's going to be one of the moments on there. A great moment for a great player. My overall thoughts on his season is that he proved every ounce of what people that were respecting him and saying that they should bring him back were saying. He was a top six center through and through this season. He was a top line center through and through this season. A great year for a great player. And you know while he didn't have much to prove, he proved people wrong again. In year 17... He proved people wrong. His importance to this team remains enormous, right? If it wasn't for him, it would have just been Sidney Crosby carrying the Penguins. But it was Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin carrying the Penguins. Their line mates were great this season, and we'll get to them. But it starts with the centers, as it has for the better part of the last two decades. It starts with the franchise altering the franchise pillars right down the middle of the ice. Kenny Malkin and Sidney Crosby both had phenomenal seasons. And again, it's hard for them to miss the playoffs. But I would not be shocked if all that does is Burn that desire a little bit more. Maybe they maybe they train a little bit more this offseason. And the good thing is, both of these guys, as far as we know, don't have to rehab any injuries this offseason, which is a major, major thing for players at their stage of their careers. To not have to rehab an injury and just be able to train and improve and stack on top of what you already have, that is massive. And to look at these two players, both over a point per game, both having incredibly solid seasons, and doing it in the same place that they started. Look around the league. The players that they have played the majority of their career against. Patrick Kane was traded from the Chicago Blackhawks. Jonathan Taves just played his last game as a Chicago Blackhawk. We saw last night... That could be the last game of Patrice Bergeron's career. Some of these guys, the the level of play has fallen off. Most of these guys, the level of play has fallen off. Not that they're bad players. They're just not what they once were. And yet Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin continue to go out there, put up over a point per game, and carry a team that did really didn't do much to help them for the majority of the year. We start with these two because we start with the two people that were least responsible for the team missing the playoffs. Do they have a hand in it? Yes. When a team doesn't show up to play the Chicago Blackhawks in the second to last game of the season, do I hold them accountable? Yes, they're the leaders. If the team's not ready to play, it's on them and it's on the coaches. But when it comes to their soul, their performance alone, there's not much you can hold against them. You're nitpicking if you do. I tried to nitpick. It felt wrong because it kind of was because there's not much that you can say about these two players in a negative light. Even after the first time that they've missed the playoffs in over a decade and a half. That's going to do it for this episode of Penguins to Go. You can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from. We will be back later this week with more player reviews. I think we're going to go to the left wings. Jake Gensel and Jason Zucker. That's going to be a fun episode as well. We'll see you guys next time.